It's October 3rd, 2017, and everyone's thinking about the Las Vegas mass shooting. On Sunday, October 1st, from 5 to 8, we held the Whole Brain Show to offer the world a new framework that could change the way we live before, during, and after. Two hours after the show, the Whole Brain Show, at the Las Vegas gun show, there was a mass shooting. And uh, let's hear what they have to say about it. Everyone has applauded the Las Vegas Police Department for the quick action during the shooting. For more, let's bring in retired Assistant Sheriff Gregory McCurdy of the Las Vegas Police Department. Sheriff, thank you so much for joining us. We want to play for you this from the Today Show earlier. It okay. appears we don't have the sound. Talk us through this extraordinary response from everyone we have spoken to in Las Vegas, the speed in which the first responders made it here, and the fact that they ran in in the face of this crisis, and for many of them, completely outgunned by what they were facing. Well, it goes back to some training we did shortly after the Mumbai attacks. We uh, spent a lot of time with what's called a MACTAC response. We uh, put officers through active shooter training. And once you continue to train, 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 people have a tendency to react normally because that's what they do. And these young men and women on this police department, I, I was telling some folks yesterday how proud I was. And I was texting back and forth with the sheriff and the undersheriff and their leadership and the leadership of all the men and women. But to imagine that, you know, people are unsure exactly what was going on. Imagine now that we look back and we see two holes in the window of a hotel. We didn't train for that. Right. We did not imagine that. That's different. That's So this is, I mean, remarkable how it unfolded and the first responders and the fact that the first responders were outnumbered by the number of injured. Uh, you know, those holes in the windows are right there. But you and I talked in the early hours this morning about how, knowing what little we know now, how you would prevent that from happening again because no one expected that. No one expected and, and, the guy to have all these weapons in a, in a hotel room. Absolutely not. You know, and, and we talked about the fact that, you know, I've been in hotel casino business. I help open hotel after I retire from policing. And I look at all the luggage that comes in, people, you know, look at all of your equipment. Look I mean, at our, yeah, we yeah, come in with 20 cases at a time. And, and who would suspect? In addition to that, we have shot shows. We have hunting shows. We have a lot of shows where, unfortunately, the folks in hotels are probably accustomed to, to seeing, seeing long guns exactly. and cases coming in, so, right? It's incredibly difficult, and I thought, what can we do to change? I think it's just now we're going to have to be more intelligent. Security is going to have to be more vigilant, but it's beyond the security apparatus of a hotel and casino. It includes all the guest room attendants. It includes development. It includes all the staff to look and see who's coming into our hotel. Pay attention. Say hello to them. Let them know that they are seen, that they are not just able to move about freely without being noticed. I think that will help, but there's just an a, a unimaginable thing that occurs. Uh, October 1st will always be emblazoned now. October 1st, 2017 in all of our minds. But is that a reasonable expectation? Think about it. Las Vegas has 45 million tourists. People come here to get wild. They come here to be to crazy. not necessarily be seen. If you are a hotel desk clerk, should it be a, a red flag for you when someone says, I'd like to be on the 32nd floor. I'd like to have a, a window facing north. Should that be a, a red flag? Because people I ask for that think, reasonably, right? I would think that in Vegas, people for a lot of while. He could have said, I want to see the show. Yeah. You know, he could have. He Which would not have triggered anyone to think that that's unreasonable. Absolutely not. And that's why this is this is just horrifically uh, unimaginable uh, event that took place. That at the, the thing that is, is great when you look at the response, because of the response, 22,000 people in a confined area who could have not move and having now talked to a few of the people that were there, uh, the response from good Americans helping yeah. one another to me was astounding. And you know, that's something else we have to recognize and be proud of too, because that had to play a huge part of saving lives. Yeah. And when you imagine that he's fired off a volley of rounds and then he stops, 
people may have thought, okay, it's over, they get up. Now they get up, they're targets again. So you start to think about all of this, that the carnage could have been a lot worse. Thank God that it wasn't. And my heart felt thoughts and prayers go out to everyone that was affected by this, because it's affected me, it's affected us as I stand here and I look and I talk to these officers out here on, on the perimeter today. And it's just uh, one of those situations that, you know, what can we do? Again, difficult. How can we expect a front desk clerk to be like a 30-year trained police officer? It's not going to happen. It's the hospitality industry. Sure. But, you know, we have to just say, hey, you know, let's just look and see what we can peel back, see what it is that we can consider. So, you know, it's uh, it, it will change Vegas in the uh, sense that people will be more vigilant, hopefully. And that's all we can do. And we, you know, oftentimes most of these hotels have signs in their back of house that says, see something, say something, yeah. which is what we want all our employees to do and tell somebody, yeah. you know. Greg, thanks very much. We appreciate your yeah. insight into this. Gregory McCurdy. Think about those first responders directing people to safety as they themselves ran straight into danger. Yeah. All right, we're going to take a break. Next, Stephen Paddock's girlfriend. What clues could she provide into the shooter's motivation? So here we are listening to MSNBC in an interview of McCurdy, police officer, officer McCurdy. And the thing that strikes me is the comments about how to imagine the unimaginable, the impossibility of training all the bellhops and all this the people involved in a hotel to get them at the level of the police office, the first responders who acted so, so quickly. But at our whole brain show, we talked about a new framework that that provided a structure and functions that would give a broader understanding and that that structure, that framework could be put in the minds of every American at some level of competence. But the common denominator would then give a implicit and sometimes explicit guidelines about how to how to think how to act in the in the new world of the singularity of exponentially accelerating create technology which we're going to match with exponentially accelerating creativity so that the evil use of one human to do the Las Vegas massacre using technology with creativity can be matched by all of humanity learning to use technology with creativity for good. So the, it's the same battle, the battle between the evil and the battle between good. And we are working on a, a framework and a learning program that can be eased into the collective consciousness of the world and America and every individual. And we started that on the launch on October 1st, 2017, the second anniversary of the Whole Brain Foundation with a gala show that I hosted, Charlie Atkinson, with 
guest stars Tom Lowe and Sarah Elizabeth Combs and an all-star audience of a couple dozen people plus. And we're on our way. Uh, we know where we're going. We need to get a little, little moolah to, to launch this, um, this show, but we're on our way.